but today was another earthquake of a day in Washington, right? Today's late breaking news, because this happens literally every day now, like we start the day going, I can't believe what Trump did yesterday. And then by the end of it, it's more like, I can't remember what Trump did yesterday. <laughs> that was so long ago. <laughs> well, today's news was that the Justice Department is now appointing a special counsel to head the investigation into Russian election meddling, right? That's a good thing, yes. And, uh, and people are talking about President Trump being in real trouble this time, which means for Trump, it's a normal Wednesday. <laughs> like, when he heard they appointed a special counsel, he was probably like, special like important <laughs> or special like the guy I made fun of? Which one? <laughs> so, the new man of the hour is Robert Mueller, right? Who actually ran the FBI before Comey. And he had uh, been enjoying himself in private law practice. I can only imagine him sitting at home watching all this Comey stuff, probably saying to himself, man, I'm glad I am not part of this anymore. <laughs> I'm just like, hello? <laughs> yeah, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Would it help if I said I'm too old for this <laughs> Okay, see you in an hour, bye. You know what's funny about this whole situation is that we're experiencing this <laughs> but on Friday, Trump is leaving for his first international trip as president. Yeah, and at this point, it feels less like a trip and more like he's fleeing the country, you know? <laughs> like the captain of the plane would be like, so, Mr. President, uh, what day do we get back? Actually, it's a one-way. <laughs> like, who knows, who knows? If this investigation moves fast enough, Trump might not be able to get back home because America doesn't let criminals back into the country. <laughs> If there's been, if there's one word that has been synonymous with the Trump presidency from day one, it's been scandal, right? In fact, now everyone who works in the White House has changed their ringtone to dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Last week, it was firing FBI Director James Comey, who was coincidentally investigating Trump's ties to Russia. And then Monday, we found out that Trump revealed national security secrets, coincidentally, to the Russians. <laughs> And then last night, to complete the trilogy, yet another Trump scandal dropped. There's more breaking news, indeed another blockbuster revelation. The report saying that President Trump asked then FBI Director James Comey to end the investigation of Michael Flynn, the president's uh, former national security advisor. Now it turns out that Director Comey has notes notes and memos that document what he says the president said to him in private. If President Trump asked the FBI director to end his Russia investigation, is that the straw that breaks the camel's back? James mother truck and Comey. <laughs> First, he helps Trump get elected. Now he could be the reason Trump gets kicked out. <laughs> Comey. <laughs> Comey reminds me of every black mother. I brought you into this world and child, I can take you out of it. <laughs> and Comey's memo may in fact take Trump out of it because of a little thing known as the law. Three words, obstruction of justice. Telling the FBI director to close down an investigation of your senior campaign advisor for his activities during your campaign for president, if that's true, that is obstruction of justice. That's a crime. Oh. <laughs> the old obstruction of justice, yes. It's not just an impeachable offense. It is the impeachable offense. Obstruction of justice is to impeachments what that funky robot voice is to a Daft Punk song. <laughs> It's the key ingredients. <laughs> obstruction of justice of justice. Obstruction of... That's all it is. It's what got Bill Clinton. It's what got Richard Nixon. So in a way, Trump is becoming presidential. Now, <laughs> in case you don't know, in case you don't know, impeachment is the first official step towards removing a president from office, right? Which makes it a pretty big deal. Such a big deal that the news can't even say the word. In the last 24 hours, we keep hearing that I word a lot. Up next, the I word. Democrats, several of them, inching closer to the I word. You're gonna be hearing that word, the I word. Mumbling about the I word. Using the I word. Are we allowed to say the I word? No, you are not! <laughs> no! 
You are not. <laughs> media people, media people are never allowed to use the I word. <laughs> oh, but politicians use the I word all the time. I don't care, that's because it's their word to use. <laughs> Yeah, there's a very painful history behind that word for politicians. I don't care if you're friends with a politician, it's still not okay for you to use the I word. You don't say it. Only politicians. Anyway, the point is, this is by far the biggest Trump scandal. Until the next one. Uh, <laughs> like it's by far the biggest, you know? To not acknowledge the gravity of this Comey memo, you'd have to be willfully ignorant, uh, aggressively ignorant. Uh, in fact, you'd, you'd have to be Fox News. <laughs> because last night, watching how Fox News reported on the news of Trump asking Comey to drop the case against Flynn, I mean, it was just... <laughs> For instance, why examine what the current president is doing wrong when you could just keep talking about Obama? And if we want to talk about obstruction, and, and saying, drop the investigation, let it go, is, is an obstruction. What about President Obama publicly saying that Hillary Clinton had not done anything wrong while the FBI is investigating whether or not she had done something improper? It also takes me back to President Obama when he commented in interviews on the IRS investigation and said, you know, basically there's nothing there. James Comey, who's been in Washington for a very long time, it sounds like he has been keeping notes on all of his important conversations. I would also like to see the notes he's got on Barack Obama. You know, I would just love if one day Barack Obama was like, uh, I got your notes uh, right here. <laughs> and by the way, by the way, uh, Comey did keep notes on President Obama. We actually have one of the notes right here. It says, dear diary, Another meeting with Obama where he didn't obstruct any justice. <laughs> but when he went in for a normal handshake, I tried to give him a black eye handshake. The whole thing was really embarrassing. <laughs> it's one of the notes. Also, you know you have a <laughs> case when the best defense you can think of is, but what about the other people? <laughs> like even Jared Fogle was never like, oh, come on, like I'm the first guy, <laughs> huh? Let he who is not a pedophile cast the first stone. Ow, 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 ow. Et tu, Cosby? Oh, I guess, yeah, I guess, I guess. But randomly, randomly blaming Obama was just one way for Fox to defend Trump. I mean, these guys hit every single angle they could find. For instance, when Trump asked Comey to drop the investigation into Flynn, well, according to Fox News, that could mean anything. This morning, we're gonna be talking about what legal experts say about, you know, is it obstruction of justice? There are a lot of people who are now saying, when he said, I hope you can let this go, what did he mean exactly? When you say you hope for something, it's not a command. It's not saying you better do this. It's like, I hope I get a bicycle for Christmas, and I really hope you show up to my birthday party, or I really hope that you won't make loud noises, you know, when I'm sleeping. It seems like it's not a big deal. Yo. That guy better pray he never meets up with the mafia. <laughs> because he clearly doesn't understand subtext. He's gonna have both kneecaps broken going, but Mr. Soprano, you just said you really hoped I could pay you by Tuesday. <laughs> and I couldn't, I couldn't. I don't understand. <laughs> like, Fox News had so many ways to spin this. They even had the most challenging one, which was pretending that instead of believing James' total honesty Comey, we should all trust Donald, my inauguration crowds are the biggest Trump. I want to bring you to what Senator Richard Burr said. Somebody's going to have to do more than have anonymous sources on this one for me to believe there's something there. When you jot down the notes, he, he's not gonna, gonna, right, he's just saying what I think that he said, but it might not be verbatim. It seems to me curious as to why uh, this memo would only be surfacing now after he's been fired. Is there anyone that's watching this or in anywhere that can believe anything that James Comey is saying about any of these matters? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, a whole bunch of us, yeah, 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 because there were only two people in that room, two people, one of them took notes. The other one is the world's most famous liar. Like, forget about lying. Forget about lying about what happens in private conversation. Trump lies about things we can see. 
the size of his crowds, the margin of his victories, the real color of his skin. There are two things that Donald Trump tries to avoid at all costs, the truth and his son, Eric. We know this. <laughs> yeah, I believe the guy who took notes. Now, to some of the people on Fox, it doesn't even matter whether Trump or Comey is telling the truth. What really matters is the ratings. This is a scandal with no video, with no audio, with no sex, with no money, with no dead bodies. It's a boring scandal. No one knows the deputy AG's name. No one can pronounce the Russian defense minister's name. There's memos and which memo and who sent what memo to who. No one is emotionally invested or can even understand the story. <laughs> I think you're confusing a constitutional crisis with a movie pitch. <laughs> he sounds like he works in Hollywood. No money, no dead bodies, no sex. Take this <laughs> to PBS. <laughs> Come on, I can't work with this. Yeah, clearly, in Jesse Waters' mind, if he can't jerk off to it, then it's not news. <laughs> Last night, every single anchor on Fox News was truly special in their own way. But one man captured the essence of the evening in a way that very few could. In fact, I think he perfectly got to the heart of how Fox reacted to the scandal and really to the entirety of Donald Trump's presidency. The world is a very complicated place, Washington especially, what you think is happening often really isn't happening. What you think is happening often really isn't happening? <laughs> what are you, white Morpheus? <laughs> Who are you, man? <laughs> you know, last night, last night I realized why Donald Trump loves Fox News so much. They're basically his Snapchat filter, right? <laughs> because whatever the reality is, they'll always make him look better than he is. <laughs> yeah, and just like a snap, we're all hoping that he disappears soon. Congratulations. You've been randomly selected as a winner of free Daily Show episodes. Yes, you. To claim your prize, just watch full episodes of The Daily Show for free anytime with the Comedy Central app or at thedailyshow.com. What a winner you are. So much winning.